previously on Spotlight. I started the Theological College called PCA Pastoral Institute. The very first Theological College in Africa started by an African. This is Spotlight, a biographical series that features people who've attained significant success in their chosen fields. Today, we continue our conversation with Reverend Dr. Timothy Njoya. Listen to his struggles with his church, the state, and his role in the birth of a new republic. My name is Geoffrey Mungai. The hashtag is Spotlight Njoya. So, so you start the, this uh, new uh, alternative, uh, alternative theological education, uh, uh, alternative theological education in this new pastoral institute. Yes. For how long? I was overthrown soon because on Labor Day, nineteen seventy-seven, right. I preached a sermon, uh, 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 and I said, uh, "God liberates people completely." When he, a woman touched him and she got healed, she told Jesus. Uh, thank you. Uh, you is you who healed me. Jesus said, "No, he affirmed her dignity. He didn't claim the. He didn't think of her as a like psychophant. He said, your faith has healed you.' Right. Jesus affirmed her dignity. When he healed a, peop- a person who was brought by a parent into the house, he didn't. T- t- he was helped to walk and carry. He didn't want to carry that person. He told him, take your parent and walk.' And I said." Jesus even did not want to heal people without participation. He asked them, do you want to be healed? And one person, he put man in the eyes to go and wash himself, to participate. I said, democracy is participatory. Healing, development, all these things should be participatory because God does not save people he would by force. He prefers that all of you, all of you, including you, Mugai, go to hell willing and laughing then a secret of you goes to heaven dragged in chains. I said, what is this evidence we are doing, being dragged by Harabe, being bribed? Harabe is the ideology of the Kikuyu middle class. They want to buy other tribes and the Kenyans and the poor Kikuyu. <laughs> that this is, was during Kenyatta's time. Yeah, right. everybody. Mm-hmm. Nine men came, led by the police men in the Kikuyu. And I know, knew them because I could see their police boots. They came in the evening in the civilian cross they, they, to kill me because of my sermon, saying Harabe is the ideology of the Kikuyu middle class. So I was shocked. You can see my hand. I lost one feet, the thumb. It was completely cut off. Then I, because I was using my hand to shoot myself at 7 in the evening, nine men, and then they cut the small finger and then the other finger. You can see I lost three fingers. Right. Yes. So I told them before I died, I have forgiven you, and the Lord has forgiven you. Then he said, those who sent us to kill, this is a man of God. The man who cut me took my thumb, my finger, took it back, tied it back, but facing backward. You can see this finger is, was got you facing the, the wrong way. Right. And then he tied this one small one, and then the, the, the thumb facing backwards. You know, they were not good surgeons. They were, <laughs> they were trained how to fix organs. They were police. <laughs> they were police. <laughs> but at least they tried. They knew that if you, retu- you cut a organ and you return it, even you, if you borrow from another person, and when it's fresh, you put it, it will grow back. So they tied my father's back. I went to Nairobi Hospital. I was there th- three days in ICU. When I woke up, they were ready to heal that way. So I had seven surgeries to, turn, to try to twist my fingers. They didn't face forward fully. This so I always carrying the marks. Of, of Jesus Christ in my body. <laughs> this is 1977. 1977. So you say, you say you are overthrown. Over, and now I left the hospital. Right. The church didn't want me to continue teaching. This is the PCEA. Liber- right. The PCA. They didn't right. want to continue teaching liberation theology. They thought I was teaching liberation theology. Yet I was teaching revival. So now I came back to teach. I taught theology, you know, up to 79. One morning on 12th, June, I was caught, <laughs> and that, and I was replaced by someone else. I was not given my work, any work, in the church. I was told you can, you are very educated. You can go to Kenyatta University. In fact, we are take, taking you to Kenyatta University to teach on the way to detention. That's right. what it meant literally that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had already arrested so many people mm-hmm. in the university campus right. for being Marxist and for being radical. And since these were my friends, yeah, they, they were my buddies, people like Gogo Adiyong were going to detention and, and many other people. 
you, you get me? Right. This was not tribalism because even Kikuyu people were being detained. Right. So it was completely ideological. Right. So I refused to, I went home. Uh, uh, so the church sacked me for nine months. So I appealed to the General Assembly in the year 1980. And then I was posted, the General Assembly instructed me. And I was posted to St. Andrews. You're back to St. Andrews. I'm back to St. Andrews. Right. And that's why... It's 1980. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I started taking more on. Right. That was a mistake. Uh-huh. <laughs> to instead me and give me a church where there was live broadcast. Right. So the issue of Jojo came. And I asked the nation of Kenya. The traitor a, issue? Yeah, the traitor issue. Right. I headed it. I, I asked Kenyans to pray for Jojo. Right. He's being persecuted with the laws that he himself wrote. Yeah. And if he can be persecuted by his own law, Kenya is not safe. <laughs> so let us pray for him. <laughs> because indirectly we are praying for ourselves. <laughs> we are in for bad days if we, if we let Jojo go. Because he is part of the system. If the system can do that to itself, what shall it do to those who are not part of the system? We are talking a time when <coughs> Kanu, there was uh, the one... Akinaumayo uh, people, there was... Yes. Kanu, people, men were crying. Uh, this was a, after, down. after the repeal of the constitution in 1982. Yeah, 1982. That afternoon in parliament, yeah. uh, Kenya from from a de facto one party state... And, to, and they had made... Uh, to actually a legal one now. Yeah. Yet you dare take on... The, 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 the government. You dare take on the government. Uh, yes, just as I took in of, of, uh, the day the Moi on right. by saying his Arabi was an ideology of the Kikuyu middle class. You are taking up, you are now taking I'm taking on, on Moi. Uh, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, now I'm taking on Moi the right. way I'm taking on. I, I paid by being killed during Moi's time, even though I rose again. Now, but, mm-hmm. uh, now, <laughs> now I'm taking on Moi and telling him yeah. in his own BKBC radio yeah. that come on. Leave Jojo alone because he was the one who put you into those pos- those powers you are using mm-hmm. were made by him. You should be now. You if you can treat him like that, what? How are you going to treat everybody else? They thought he was that I was for Jojo, and even Jojo was so why great. You? Yeah, why you? I was for justice. Right. That there there should be fairness. So what happened that when Jojo was relieved, in finally he didn't. They couldn't pursue the case. Because now I put the spanner. So they let go, Georgia go home. He went and grew a lot of maize and brought me a bag. <laughs> a full bag of maize. Right. <laughs> which I'm, I distributed to my members of the church. Right. I'm, gl- I'm glad you talk about St. Andrews because I remember sometime in the 80s, I attended a Sunday morning service at uh, PCA St. Andrews. And as I walked in, we were handed in this little pamphlet that contained the day sermon. And if I remember right, the title was no hierarchy in the kingdom of God. Of God. Yeah. And it was borrowed from the book of Habakkuk. Of co- you know, yeah. Let me correct a bit. It was called uh, so righteousness is not in, uh, adequate for the kingdom of God. Right. Yeah. Right. So and it was borrowed from the book, book of, Habak- of Habakkuk. Yes. From the book of Habakkuk, and it caused quite a storm. I remember that is on when, the political scene. That's how I got defrocked again. Right. Uh, yeah. So I came to this sermon you are saying about. This was 1986. 86. It says, it's yes. October 5. Right. This was the sermon that changed Kenya. Because I, it's a sermon in which I said we must dismantle the one party state. The one party state. Yes. And we must uh, dismantle the Lancaster Constitution and replace it with a homemade gun. It was made in Lancaster. I say, argued, and the sermon is still there. I argued that this constitution was made in London, not in Kenya, by people who were hard picked by the governor to go to London. They were not uh, representatives. They were not cons- to, they were not mandated by the people with a plebiscite to make a constitution. So what happened? I said that constitution was not even signed by Kenyatta. It was brought to him by the Duke of Edinburgh uh, on an envelope on the on the Hurudi, and I don't think he read it. Now I said we need our own constitution made in Kenya by the people and uh, ratified by a referendum because that one of Lancaster. We are not told to ratify it. So we need a new constitution. We need, mo- we need pluralism. Multi party. We must dismantle the one party. This so is at a time when no one dared talk about such issues in, in, in Kenya. There was you someone know, that dared talk in the world. Other I'm, than, other I'm talking about the world. I was right. talking, I told you, I am 
18% cosmopolitan and 80% my mom. Now, this 18 I'm cosmopolitan is why I was like Gorbachev. You remember? The All Russian right. perestroika. Perestroika and glasnost. And glasnost. Yes. So I was talking from a climate of global dissatisfaction with the, the You're polarization. You're talking about the wind of change. The wind of that change. Was blown yeah, across yeah I was tired of polarization between communism and the, and the capitalism. Mm -hmm. And so was Gorbachev. So I was not alone in the, on the global scene. Right. Yeah. But you must remember your Gorbachev uh, needed a little prodding from Yeltsin before that when he stood astride uh, two tanks. Uh, uh, for me, I had Jesus Christ to prod <laughs> me. <laughs> right. I want to talk about that very sermon because yeah. it caused quite a storm. Yeah. And I want to ask you what the reaction of the church leadership then was. Okay. On Let me tell you the truth. I preached on the 5th. On 6th, Morning. The following day. Yes. Wajau came through my office. He was the moderator. He told me, we were required to go to the state house by the president. Where is Gatu? I wanted John Gatu to take me. He told me, you know those boys of Uganda, this Wajau, the, those boys, you know, during Kabaka's time, they stood with the word of God. They refused to die. They became martyrs. Mm -hmm. We are being summoned by boy to go and ask about your sermon. I was very happy. I thought thing is going to start. <laughs> So he went to the state house with John Gatto and the general secretary. And the, the, Moy, the, when they went, they found already uh, Cardinal Tuga was already there having at arrived. At state house? Yes, at state house. Biresh, the, the Cardinal Tuga for Catholic. Yes. Biresh for AIC, right. African England Church. And Matthew Rawi, a uh, Methodist. And uh, Archbishop Manana Escuria. Yes. They were already there. Yes. Because Wajau was, was a little bit looking for Gatu to, uh, to escort him. Right. So they went to the state house. And I think the chief guard or somebody was there. They were asked, did you see what Joya said last night? I want to overthrow the, uh, he wrote some massive pamphlet. And who is asking them this? Is the, the, president. the president. Right. What action are you going to take <laughs> against him? The Cardinal Otuka was the first to, to talk. Cardinal Otuka said, uh, if it were about uh, Digman and Zek, uh, the, it's only the Father, the, the Holy Father. Who, That's the Pope. The Pope, who deal with him. I would not deal with him. Uh, then Manaze said about Gitari and Okuru and Muge. That, those, they have their own synods. You know, I have no authority over them. Who else was there? Nobody else. Now, Joya, the PCA said we are going to take drastic measures <laughs> yeah? on him. You're listening to Spotlight. We're speaking with Reverend Dr. Timothy Njoya about his struggle with the church, the state, and his role in the birth of a new republic. My name is Geoffrey Mongai. The hashtag is Spotlight Njoya. So they came back to the head office. And because I was the crack of Nairobi, Uganda, and the Coast Presbytery, it's a big presbytery. I was in charge of all the churches in Uganda, uh, Nairobi area, meaning all the way to the coast as a crack of the presbytery. So they had great to the, to the and Majau, no, and Moses Waweru, another minister, was the moderator of that presbytery. They had to be written to that because it's the court responsible for my, for my discipline to sack me. So. When Wajao and Kuria returned in the office, head of his wrote a letter, now written to my presbytery, the letter which I had to read to implement a deposition about me, you know, punishment. You had to about, read as a clerk. As a clerk. Right. Written this way, I'm quoting it word for word, I never forget. The moderator of the General Assembly is required by the Supreme Head of State to take occasion against the, the subversive sermon uh, written by Joya. And verily, even ourselves believe that those how summons were subversive, uh, purported to be summons. So I want immediate action uh, taken and so for to transmit to the state house. What a mistake. <laughs> the presbytery refused that outright, saying the church is not governed by the by the state, it's governed by the Holy Spirit. And by the word of God, uh, yes. And the joyous summons were consistent with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Scripture, and uh, according to the authority 
of the Bible and the Reformed tradition. That was the verdict of the presbytery. So they called a special court to, depo to, to, to force the presbytery to depose me. So I was deposed. Was this kind of court provided for within the church uh, no, rules? No, that's what, on the, that was the basis on which I appealed uh, late, two years later, 1988, and I was reinstated by the General Assembly again. As and I I, yeah, and, and I remember you resisted uh, this uh, attempted uh, uh, ouster very, okay, very vehemently. I I even said that uh, even if they bring the entire army, that uh, uh, you're I not would, going to leave. No, no, no. What I did is that they brought a letter from Justice Chuck Dever Court to tell me to hand over the keys, not themselves. Chuck, they went to, to look for a court injunction, got it from Chuck Dever uh, to hand over the, the car, a Volvo, to hand over the office and the man's, the house. When I got the letter, I went to, no, I first of all, Madame called me himself directly. I didn't Call justice, Madame. Madame. Yeah, he called me. Mm -hmm. at he was building. then Chief Justice. Yeah, Chief Justice. Right. And he lost his job, I think, because of that. Right. He called me at mutual building. He must have been tracked by the special branch. And or even if he was not, not tracked, for me, I was being tracked by nine men every day. Three at, th three at night, three in the morning, and three afternoon. Every time, my home was always surrounded. So now... <laughs> Madam, I invited him for, a, for lunch. And he bought lunch. He asked me, should me join? These things you are being told by my justice, Chuck Deva to surrender. You can only surrender them if you use them for a purpose which was not for the church. You use them for the purpose of preaching. You did not abuse or misuse them. So there's no need. They should have to prove that you didn't you use them to commit adultery. <laughs> Or to commit a sin. I was very happy. Being advised by the Chief Justice. Right. He was as good as Mutunga at that time. So, he was for human rights. So, I left Madan, went to Moiro Hiro, Waro Hiro and Moite. Found Moite. I told him, Moite, here, you have taken me to Shakideva to Haretha those things. He was a church lawyer. We talked, he told me, now I'm on your side. That's when Moite became radicalized. Now I'm on your side. You don't surrender them. Imagine a church lawyer advising me not to surrender. I stayed in the house, but they brought some recorded Shumo. And this was very ethnic. The church brought Shumo because he's a courage into prison boy. He couldn't manage in the in the in the atmosphere of St. Andrews. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I, I and I want to talk because you mentioned Bishop Henry Okulu and Alexander Muge. And this sort of anti government three member clergy team of yourself and those two. Was this by design or was this this is just we happened were playing by accident? The, we are playing the ball on the same side when it came to no all oh, four things nepotism against uh, uh, tribalism. The other thing is against poverty. So we were fighting for those. But when they, but we parted company with them. The only day I say we dismantle the one party state. And then we dismantle the Lancaster constitution. They were not ready to go overboard. They didn't know. They had no conceptual framework of understanding whether there can be a government without the Lancaster constitution. It, is, it, it was a kind of academic deficit. You know, right. I was training the political... Academic def deficit on their part. On their part. Right. They, uh, they, they, have, they did not have political theory. Well, um, what is it that you saw that yeah. you didn't see at that time? What is it that in the in the, in the I, well, I had eight years of, uh, uh, had many eight years of theological education on, on political science. I've done political theory. I've read Machiavelli. I've read all. I've, I've read about how to change governments. Right. <laughs> right. And even I had trained in ballistic science myself. It's military science. So Man of the cloth, military science? Yeah, one course in Princeton, because there is a cadet school training in Princeton, part of the curriculum. I offered one course on ballistics. So I, I knew about how to change government. <laughs> At least in theory, not in, not in operation theory. And this is what you sought to implement with your salmon then? Yeah, I wanted uh -huh. to change government, not by bullet. 
uh-huh. but by word of God. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, did it look like at that time, even to you, mm. uh, having been exposed to political theory, as you say, did it look like a Herculean task, considering the no, no, no. the it, amount of the amount of power that Kanu had over the country? No. You see, when you are given a radio and a pulpit, you are given the people of Kenya. You are more, you are more accessible. Accessible to the people than President Moy. You know, when you are introduced, you are Minister of Kevira, you are Minister of Matare. This is Nairobi. Everybody in Kevira shakes hands with me. We are there eating. Me helping them make changa, even though I didn't drink it. <laughs> you see, going to know how it is made. So you, I'm saying, here you are, you, at Minister of St. Andrews, and you are from Ma- Monday to Saturday with the people of Nairobi. Tell me. Kawangware, everywhere. The so tell me, oh. you are given the nation in your, on a golden platter. And then on Saturday, you are preaching them on a radio. So I'm saying, here I am, having learned a political theory and, and knowing the grievances and the dis- dissatisfaction and the poverty and the diseases. The hospitals, no medicine. You get me? Schools, no fees, no books. Seen children commit suicide after they fail exams. For me, I buried children who committed suicide for failing exams because they didn't know where they asked to go. So, when you are with the people all the time, having gone to hospital, seeing people die of a lack of medicine, you know, there are no kidney dialysis, I don't think, that time. People die of curable diseases from lack of money and lack of medicine. When, when you, have, you, you are the one charged to be a minister, to those people, what would you write? Remove the government and have a different one. And you've paid dearly for that kind of thing. Um, you, in 1997, you received quite a beating at, uh, the, old, Saints, at, yeah. the, at the Old Saints and um, uh, later outside Parliament building, a very public beating uh, by uniformed police and uh, some... Oh, to me that was... The some militia, right? You see the problem that they did that they were abetting, they were abetting, they were, they were accelerating change. You know, by so doing, you know, I had gone to All Saints Cathedral on a Sabbath Sabbath day to, to commemorate the people who had died in 1990 on Sabbath Sabbath, the first commemoration in the public. And the people are, were going to come, and the more in the evening said, the uh, Joya and the Weiri Mutuga and the Kibuza Kibwana and the Kamakuria has called off the rally. He announced it. <laughs> so people now came to see what we can do. They could not believe we could call off something we had uh, announced. So the people came in defiance of the president. And so happened that on the same day, there was a meeting in, in the state house. And Moy was coming from uh, the, uh, carrying the Mokapa. You see, I remember vividly the details. They were coming to the state house. And now he saw me standing with a red gown outside. Police chasing everybody in every direction and tear gas. And he also had the tear gas in his eyes. Moi must have tear gas. Because we were being beaten. And I was here talking with the Kiada, the, the assistant police commissioner of Nairobi, telling him to call off the beating of, of the other people. Oh, then he said, who is that? Who is that? that, that, that is, yeah. And the car stopped. Moi. His, his bodyguard stepped out and came and asked him, who is this judge? Kill him, kill him. I was saved by the Kianda and the police were for embarking, beating me about 40 men. They embarked to beat me with the axe hurdles. That's how I was saved from being shot by Moi's bodyguards. Then I fell down. And then the, the, now the, the police left for me to be shot. And the Italian bodyguard and two Two other journalists, Kenya journalists, covered my body. That's how I was saved by the journalist. And this you called an attempt on your life. An, an attempt, an attempt to kill. But I was saved by John by by being beaten with axe handles rather than being shot. Right. Even though it broke my skull bone one here right. and it broke my heart mm-hmm. and my shoulder. So what happened is that as I was being beaten, mince meat on the ground, the 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 press. A man from an Italian press and, uh, and uh, two other Kenya journalists is the one who, who dropped their cameras to shield me from being killed. Mm-hmm. 
which was wonderful. I never, I've never seen such journalism in Kenya like that time. Or whoever, or whoever took me to to hospital to mortuary. But on the way, they thought, to the mortuary. Yeah, but they stopped on the mortuary because they were, had to pass through Nairobi Hospital. Uh, and Doctor Gekonyo resuscitated me. Doctor Gekonyo, the heart specialist. Yeah, he's mm. the one who resuscitated me. Reverend Joya spent three days at the intensive care unit and was back in the street hardly a week later. Few will forget the disturbing but enduring image of Reverend Joya sprawled on the ground outside Parliament, pleading for his life while being attacked by goons. Now retired, he likes to refer to himself as a house husband. Next, on Spotlight. Sometimes the good values which exist in many Kenyan people out there are usually given the back banner and then the stunts are given the front page. That has been a rerun of the conversation that Jeffrey Mungai had with the Reverend Timothy Njoya on the 7th of June 2015. Please let us know which other personality that we've featured on the program you'd like to listen to again. You can talk to us via text SPOTLIGHT to 22162. We thank you for your feedback. If you missed part or all of this program, catch a repeat on Thursday night at half past nine. You can also listen on our Facebook page where you can also leave a comment. Keep the conversation going via Twitter at KBC English. The hashtag is Spotlight Enjoyer. My name is Geoffrey Mungai. Goodbye.